Okay, uh, all members are here that basically said that they were going to attend. We have quite a few excused uh, for tonight. So the first order of business, um, if, before we call the orders, we actually have to elect a temporary chairman because both the chair and the vice chair are gone uh, tonight. So chairman because both the chair and the vice chair are gone uh, tonight. So uh, I'm looking for a motion for a person um, to be elected in the second uh, chair. And then once we actually elect the temporary chair for tonight, then we actually call for the meeting of the quarter. Actually call for the meeting of the quarter. Or if somebody just wants to volunteer, that would be okay. <laughs> there you go. Oh, there we go. Have you done it before? No. Okay. <laughs> You're good at it. Not on the floor. All right, I have a motion. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Congratulations, you are now chair. <laughs> For life. We <laughs> <laughs> mentioned that for you. Yep, we're going right. to start. Call to order the December 2021 meeting of the City of Franklin Technology Commission. It's December 8th. And I will call the roll. Uh, Alderman Dan Mayer. Present. Uh, Regis Serrano. Aye. Norma Kesslin. Here. John Parney. Present. Michelle Tischer. Here. And we have a quorum. And uh, yep. please rise and we'll say the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Under God. Indivisible, liberty and justice for Okay, item number two, citizen comment period. Looks like we do have some guests tonight. Anyone wishing to speak can just um, stand up and, and uh, say what you wish to say. Oh, hi. Uh, I'm a neighbor living right down the block over here, and uh, about four or six months ago, I came to one of the meetings with your marquee outside, and I was just curious to see if the cell tower or the uh, uh, fire station tower, the water tower, was getting pretty, uh, pretty uh, uh, filled with a lot of repeaters and stuff like that. And uh, I learned that the Franklin is the highest uh, point in Milwaukee County, so the county can kind of mandate it. They got to have this. We're also utilizing our tower, and uh, my question to uh, the committee at that time was, that, you know, is there any concern for all of this radiation or all of these uh, cell tower re repeaters with this community right over here? We got Forest Hill Village and stuff like that. Everybody said, well, no, we don't think that there's any real issue. And being a novice, I don't want to go on the internet and I get bombarded with all of this stuff like everybody else does. And it just so happened yesterday they had a uh, thing on uh, uh, electromagnetic frequency, uh, 5G and the cell towers that are transmitting. And I listened to it, and it just so happened that they had this guy on there who was a professor, and he had all kinds of credentials, and he is actually one of the world-leading uh, uh, researchers on the effects of 5G. And, uh, and he gave uh, the effects of 5G, and, uh, and he gave uh, a little brief talk via the news. And actually, and it's too lengthy, I don't know, it's like five minutes long. And I was just going to, I didn't know how formal or casual this was going to be. And I was just going to see if any more casual this was going to be. And I was just going to see if anybody was interested in uh, listening to this world, one of the world leaders in this uh, research of the 5G technology uh, and some of the concerns that this guy has in this country, because our country isn't as regulated as some of the uh, other rollouts around the world. And uh, uh, I was just wondering if anybody would be interested in either formally or listening to it for like five minutes, and I think I kind of picked up a kind of an interesting part of it. So that's uh, seconds away. I 
I said, how can I go and pass up the opportunity once I knew that the marquee was on for about a week that you were going to meet today? So, is it I, on YouTube or right now, or do you have it on it, the podcast? It, it's not, I don't know what it, it wasn't on YouTube. It was uh, some kind of uh, once you get on one, maybe it was uh, some kind of uh, once you get on one mailing list, I mean, you get on everything, you know what I mean. <laughs> Sir, what I would suggest, rather than playing it at the meeting, is if you want to get it to staff, we will get it to the to the committee members. Okay. Um, and then we will share it with them, the committee members. Okay. Um, and then we will share it with them. Yep. You, you know how to do it because I don't know how to do it. <laughs> <laughs> it's a recording that I just recorded, so I don't oh, know like how on your so on your you phone. You know how to do it? You're welcome to it. Okay. Um, yeah, it, it, most of, is that an iPhone? Within uh, an iPhone of e forwarding an email, that that over to, to me is an email. If it's if it's small enough, that then yeah, I can then turn around and, and listen to it. Here's the kick to this whole thing. This is an iPhone 12, mm -hmm. and uh, I'm turning this one in. <laughs> so like that. So not like I say. It's uh, interesting. Maybe I can go and I can, for maybe for the next meeting, I can see if I can go and figure out who this guy really is, and maybe then I can get a web address, and maybe then I can give you the web address. And that would help. So yeah. maybe have a source and a resource with uh, some of the concerns of what academia is starting to raise about this uh, 5G. And like I say, it's because the tower is here. I mean, three years ago, you only had maybe two repeaters, and within the last X amount of years, probably the last year, it's starting to get a lot of repeaters on there. And my question or my comment the last time was, is can you suggest? Because we rent them, and we get a little bit of revenue, I think, from renting them to the, the cell companies, and we all want good connection. However, we got that other tower over there by the. Uh, uh, Roads road to all of the interested parties, if you start to go and utilize that one, or even in the future, you got to go strategically think where another tower might have to go, like whether it be like Menard Speedway Court, out by the dump, or something like that, so we can kind of limit this residential area with too much, too. You know, it can start to look kind of trashy. If you got a tower like that one on 27th by Menards, if you ever look at that Oak Creek Tower, I mean, that thing really looks, I don't know, odd, ridiculous, overdone. I call it a over-decorated Christmas tree. <laughs> so anyway, I don't know if I'm in the right place or not, but you guys are the technology committee, and that's how I kind of define you is along that line. Yeah, if you want to uh, share that with me, I'll be more than willing to hear it and then distribute it off to the rest of the commission as well. Okay. I'll turn this off. To the rest of the commission as well. Okay. I'll turn this off then. Okay. Unless you want it for background music or background noise. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you can dance to it, maybe. <laughs> oh, cancer. Okay. Any other comments? Any other comments? Uh, moving on to item three, review and approval of the October 27, 2021 meeting minutes. We're taking a minute to review those. Review those. motions to approve the minutes. Yeah. One second. Person second. second. Minutes approved. All in favor? Aye. 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 Item number four, 2021 IT projects and review. We try at least once a year to give a little bit of a year 
to give a little bit of a reflection on what IT has done uh, over the last couple, last 12 months. Um, just as not only a turnaround in information, even though the group has heard a lot of the, these projects, uh, both through the director's notes and also through projects that are a little bit of good to turn around and look at a little bit of a post-mortem, what worked right, <coughs> not work all, all that well. And it has been a, a significantly busy year uh, this year. Uh, unlike previous years where we've done a considerable amount of work in infrastructure, uh, this year was different. Um, even after COVID, this year we actually turned around missions, upgrading the applications uh, for, for city operations. Uh, there were basically four main categories of areas that we concentrated on this year. Uh, the first was ERP and cross-departmental workflows, uh, something that really was not done all that much before because we still had uh, something that really was not done all that much before because we still had data islands uh, within our, even within our ERP system. It wasn't all that encompassing and it didn't communicate at all to the financial system. Uh, we had some infrastructure changes this year, both planned and unplanned. Uh, had some infrastructure changes this year, both planned and unplanned. Uh, and then, uh, as we're going on later on tonight, uh, IT uh, strategy, reviewing the IT strategic plan, and also looking at some, creating a series of policy definitions. And last but not least, we also did a good amount uh, of work within IT on over into 2022. Uh, the year kicked off with basically the elimination of MS Govern. Uh, Govern was our main ERP platform uh, that handled all of our parcels, all of our permit tracking. Uh, it was implemented basically in 2003, so we've been using it for, for quite some peer tracking and business licensing. Uh, Govern was very, very closely coupled with GIS, our map building software. And it used a, a custom third-party program called Edit App to turn around and synchronize the information between what was going into Govern, what was going into GIS, and then also they can then turn around and download all the parcel updates, give it over to Milwaukee County, and make sure that their proprietary system uh, called Universe was also updated as well. Uh, that coupling between the applications did require that there was had to be a very stable version between the system worked on the database schema, and if you suddenly turn around and change the database on it, suddenly the application, which was a third party custom homegrown written program, would cease to work. Uh, over time, that meant that the GIS system could not turn around and be upgraded to the latest and great, latest and greatest versions of ArcGIS, latest and greatest versions of ArcGIS. Um, and it also meant that we couldn't turn around and do upgrades and keep current. And we started falling out of support. Uh, with ArcGIS where it got very close to the point where the vendor would no longer turn around and support our system. So we knew we had to turn around and move out of that uh, little, little So we knew we had to turn around and move out of that uh, little, little niche that we dug ourselves into and try to get rid of Edit App as much as we possibly could. Uh, Harris Systems basically turned around and uh, wrote MS Govern. Um, we were on two versions earlier than the earlier than their latest version. Uh, the current version is version 6.0 called Open Forms. Uh, and I saw over the last two years that Harris pretty much, even though it's a very large company, halted development on Open Forms. And even when you go to their convention, they're promoting all of the uh, applications out there and they really are not turning around and giving that much time and attention. Uh, to govern open forms. Uh, to me, it looks like they are basically trying to grandfather this, this application and push it over to another application that they also uh, currently uh, develop over there is with water utility billing. And we had the need um, to turn around and move water utility billing uh, into the ERP system from, from, from what it currently was and tie it into the financial system and they were supposed to code it and kept on promising me that the water utility billing module would turn around and be completed and they never got me, that the water utility billing module would turn around and be completed and they never got it coded. To this day, they still do not have all of the modules flushed out for Govern Open Forms, even though when I first attended the Govern Convention back in 2016, that they were 16, 
that they were basically promising that the entire suite of applications would be completed. In six years, the vendor did not turn around and complete that suite of products. So uh, it is a very good thing, in my opinion, that we're actually moving away from that, that particular vendor. I do not think uh, the city migrated basically over to BSNA, which is our financial system uh, as well, and we did it basically within two to three months. That was extremely <laughs> aggressive for um, any type of an ERP project. They also, instead of using a traditional waterfall or cascade method to help online prototype it, show, uh, basically show it to your customer, go do some changes, have a workout session, drive more business requirements from the workout session, go ahead, make a few changes, prototype it to the person. Um, they started uh, doing that a lot with the inspections department, but they were some um, they started uh, doing that a lot with the inspections department, but they were currently doing both development uh, in onboarding us and turning around and driving the business requirements out at the same time within these one-on-one -on -one sessions. Uh, what got really interesting is because of COVID, all of it had one sessions. Uh, what got really interesting is because of COVID, all of it had to be done completely and totally via video conference. So every lick of the workout sessions all had it to turn around and be done online. We were scheduled to turn around and actually have the vendor come to us the last couple of weeks prior to cuddle. They, they never showed up. They, we were able to turn around and do all of the work, including onboarding, 100% remotely, which was the first time they as a company had to really do that for a, for a city of, of our scale and our size. But that was a COVID requirement, and we have to be flexible and discover new ways with all of our parcels. That went live the third week of January. Uh, then we did inspections, permits, and planning and zoning. Uh, that went live the first week of February approximately. And then business licensing and complaints for the clerk's department, that went live uh, the third week of February. Also top eight to 10 new uh, uh, Surface laptops over in the inspections departments. They used to have to turn around and carry these big clipboards with, with forms that, that had carbon paper on it. And they, in ballpoint pen, they would turn around and write out literally on this clipboard, the way they've been doing it for 20 plus years, all of their have to come in about four o'clock uh, out in the field and then march up upstairs and then basically retype everything they put in ballpoint pen on their, on their clipboard. What a waste of time. With the uh, Surface tablets, they're able to turn around and bring up the actual permit, write their inspections report for that uh, two cameras, both a front-facing and, and a rear-facing camera on it, so they can take pictures of the actual inspections while they're in there, while they are there, and they can include that then into their report. And then when they're done, they can synchronize all of those inspections reports right back over to the, the government. BSNA data and then a lot of effort within, within the process. So um, they were very, very happy to turn around and get a little, uh, little more automation as part of that ERP project. Uh, over at the police department, Pro Phoenix is our record management system and computer aided dispatch system. Um, they, they were running on version 2018, which is about two versions behind. Uh, what the latest and greatest version was on it. Uh, also, the older systems that we have were running on Windows 2008, which was no longer being supported uh, by Microsoft. As part of this project, we basically built all supported uh, by Microsoft. As part of this project, we basically built all new virtual machines uh, that were based on Windows 2016. Uh, we built a brand new SQL 2019 server as part of this. And it was a nice clean installation where you were able to basically run everything in parallel, basically run everything in parallel. So we were able to put the, the new ERP onto the new virtual machines, fully test it out. And then when everything looked good, then we just turn around and click the switch and basically moved everything over to the, to the new VMs. And then we're able to decommission uh, the old VMs. Uh, this was a little bit more, uh, does have a lot of links to other systems. It has some links over to the police citations system for their tickets. Uh, it has a Department of Justice online uh, reporting portal where they're able to take all of the police events and then post it up to the DOJ and the DA's offices 
for prosecution, and that also links to MOSBA, um, is used over at uh, the city of Greenfield to report uh, basically where the locations of all the emergency vehicles are at any given period of time. Also going live, once we got done with uh, the upgrade of Pro Phoenix, uh, there was a project that's actually been on the plate since so uh, there was a project that's actually been on the plate so since 2016, and that was uh, station alerting. Uh, station alerting basically has an Alexa-like voice attendant, computer attendant, uh, calling out all of the dispatch calls over to the fire department, uh, either for fire or for uh, ambulance calls over to the fire department. Uh, either for fire or for uh, ambulance or emergency management services. Um, this then frees up the dispatcher from having to turn around and manually dispatch the person. They basically can then go back to the emergency 911 call and work with a constituent, and they'll just turn around. This did require a whole bunch of new hardware being put in each of the three fire stations. Uh, you needed a controller over there, uh, all sorts of new cabling's, they have LED display boards uh, that would turn around and uh, write out what Alexa was basically turning around and telling you. Um, they have your uh, sleeping cubicle with LED lights to turn around and wake you up whenever you turn around and had, had a problem uh, for it. And then speakers were put all the way throughout the, uh, the, the fire station so you actually can hear the dispatch uh, as it's coming in. And then you can look at the controller to get more information from it if you need it. Uh, the nice thing about the controller to get more information from it if you need it. Uh, the nice thing about this is instead of dispatching all three fire stations every single time that a call came in, this only turned around and dispatched the fire station that actually was going to dispatch out to the, to the call. So if you had fire station three that needed to dispatch out to the, to the call. So if you had fire station three that needed to dispatch out to the call, Fire Station 1 and Fire Station 2 would not receive it, which allows them to sleep at night instead of being woken up for dispatches that had nothing to do with them. Uh, Milwaukee County talent this year, part of it was due to the Democratic National Convention next year, uh, which was uh, basically, I think, the main incentive for moving forward again with, with the project. Uh, the name has gone through m many things. Fat Pot, I think, was one of the big ones that they had out there. Uh, TELUS is the, the company's name as it is right now. Who, who, uh, TELUS integrates deeply with Phoenix, uh, both RMS and CAD. And its intention is to allow uh, municipalities throughout all of the county to turn around and do mutual aid requests from one another. So instead of going on the radio and requesting mutual aid on the radio, I have a large municipality send their fire trucks and their emergency vehicles and police squads over to the station, I can now right from my CAD station, turn around and request all those mutual aid vehicles. Uh, they will get a request, for example, if we have a fire here and if Oak Creek was gonna lend mutual aid, they will then get a request over at the dispatch, deny the request for the, for the additional dispatch vehicle. Um, we had to turn around and set up a lot of communication links um, over to uh, the multi-tenant post, which is one neck up in Madison. So all 17 municipalities had to turn around and set up VPN tunnels, uh, get things working, get things working networking wise through their, lo their load balancer uh, for it, in addition to setting up a dedicated test environment for, for each PSAP. Uh, that then allowed us to do a whole bunch of robust testing of their application. And we have been testing and testing and testing uh, with the cases, finding bugs, and then having and testing and testing uh, with the cases, finding bugs, and then having the vendor go back and actually uh, correct many of the bugs inside the system. Uh, TELUS is now directly integrated into CAD. When they first envisioned this, it was separate. So you had a TELUS screen that showed you all the dispatches, uh, that showed you all the dispatches uh, and what was going on throughout the entire country and uh, county, and then it would geofence. Where, where the event was actually going on. Uh, they decided now to turn around and integrate that directly into the Pro Phoenix system itself. In other words, they took the TELUS technology and folded it into Pro Phoenix as well, sell basically this type of feature now to a broader customer base. Um, there are roll-up screens that you can still get through their, their main client for reporting and seeing what's going on at any given particular PSAP at any given period of time 
which really helps that if you have like uh, an event like the uh, like a tension going on, you're going to want to have that far more pervasive one pane of glass look of what's going on of all issues throughout the entire county. Uh, we were working on it. We were hoping it was going to go live by the end of this year, uh, but there were some more bugs, uh, six key ones that they found, and they're turning around and uh, six key ones that they found, and they're turning around and putting in a new hot fix for it. So it looks like we're potentially going to be going live with that first quarter of 2022. Um, at least that's the hope at this point uh, of time that we should be getting close. Everyone's testing, everyone's working on it right now, and that was close. Everyone's testing, everyone's working on it right now, and that was actually making a good amount of progress. Or I think it's actually turning around, gonna, going to actually meet that date. Uh, Franklin Municipal Tips Court, Tips System, that was upgraded. Uh, it was about July where we turned around and upgraded the application. Tips basically is the entire court management system for the, for the municipal courts. Keeps track of their caseloads, keeps track of citations. Uh, we put it on a new virtual machine. Uh, it was on 2008, now it's on 2016. And we moved the application from uh, the police department over here to City Hall, the addresses, and they did the turnaround and uh, be able to integrate their new online payment portal. Now we actually have the capability where you can actually go to a website, bring up your traffic citation, and you can turn around and actually pay your traffic citation online. Uh, we also switched uh, credit card payment providers. Uh, we went uh, throughout all of, of the city where if you were going to do a credit card payment, I think it was around 6% uh, that what all, what all, all pay slash gov pay uh, normally charge and point and pay right now is about 2% uh, for, for the fees that we charge for it. Uh, and most likely we're probably going to see we have this capability that probably most likely the way things go is people will start doing things online via the web instead of going to the counter and actually turning around and doing the payments. We switched uh, to a new uh, spam and email filtering uh, provider. We were with Semantic Email Secure, branded name of, of a company called Message Labs, who actually provided it for Semantic. Uh, Semantic was bought out by Broadcom, and it's a real strong question <coughs> if Broadcom was going to turn around and actually keep that product around for the long term. Even though it did us very, very well for a good period of time, there is a question are they eventually going to turn around and terminate this product. Uh, with this, we got a whole bunch of new uh, email phishing. Um, uh, detection uh, features within, within the product uh, and DMARC was significantly uh, strengthened and well uh, hardened as well so it's fairly difficult for someone to turn around and impersonate for someone to turn around and impersonate the franklinwi.gov domain and because we are on .gov uh, we are meeting and I just got a uh, an email message not that long ago saying it's a recommendation by the Wisconsin Election Commission that all municipalities use a .gov domain name and start using D that all municipalities use a .gov domain name and start using DMARC to, to protect their domains. I can say that we are in full compliance with that well ahead of any, any potential recommendations or requirements out there. So we are now meeting federal standards uh, on that. Uh, we're getting also far more robust uh, reporting on non-delivery non of messages. Uh, before, if a message bounced and didn't go through, you wouldn't know about it. You didn't get any form of an alert telling you, hey, your message turned around and bounced. You misspelled the person's uh, email domain name, forgot to put in a T in the domain name, and suddenly it's going out to nowhere, which, other than a person picking up the phone and calling you and saying, hey, I didn't get the email, can you resend it? Now you actually, within four days, get a bounce message after it uh, stales out of the retry queue and you're now alerted that, hey, the email wasn't actually turned around and received. Uh, if there's an, a hyperlink within the email message, some people like this feature, some people don't, but you have to have your device registered with Mimecast in order to turn around and click the email link. Now, I constantly have my web browser clear my cookies and my web cache every time I close it. So every time I get an email message that has a hyperlink in it, so every time I get an email message that has a hyperlink in it, I have to click, and then it says, please register with Mimecast, so I have to put my ID in, it sends me a, a security code, I have to put that security code in, 
All right, now it turns around and shows me the actual uh, URL of the uh, hyper uh, URL of the uh, hyperlink that was contained in the message. That really cuts down a lot on click the link type of, of email fraud out there because you have to go through quite a few steps in order to turn around and actually open up the URL now from, from the email message. Jim, is that you do that? Uh, yes, every everyone in the entire city actually has to do that. Now, if you don't okay. clear your cookies, it'll remember it. So okay. it will create a cookie and it'll stay on there with that code saying that you're a registered device uh, off okay. of it. But eventually that cookie will stale out and then you have to re-register. Okay. So yes, it, 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 my cookie is every single time because I'm hypersensitive okay. <laughs> on security uh, on it. And if you if you set your web browser security to do that, yep, then you have to do it every every single time you open and close okay. the web browser. Otherwise, it's X amount of days before this cookie's uh, stale out, and then you have to turn around and. Re Otherwise, it's X amount of days before this cookie's uh, stale out, and then you have to turn around and re-register. Okay. So it's mandatory. It's going to be a protocol. Yep. Uh, message tracking has been greatly uh, improved on Mimecast than before. I actually can see the envelope headers for both delivery cast than before. I actually can see the envelope headers for both delivery and receipt on it. So when I'm logging on it, I can see what it looked like when the original message was delivered. And then if I forward it, I can actually see how it actually appears on the receipt. That really helps a lot in, in troubleshooting for it. So there's a lot of semantic. And then all the policy files that, that they have, and there's 41 built in by default policies that you, that you can have. And you can also specify those policies not by just the entire company. You can break it down to different policies for groups of people and different individuals. Uh, so there's a lot more customization that we're able to do. For the last 30 days, there would be a lot of people extremely envious about that. We have a 97.15% DMARC compliance on the franklinwi.gov domain. And the next question is, what about that 3%? Well, I found out after querying uh, Mimecast, anything that's an automated, there's an auto reply for it, it gets thrown out there using Mimecast's eKim uh, selector on that, and that's the 3% that we normally turn around and see, is those automated non-delivery postmaster uh, message to messaging system type of, of email messages going through. Strong, very good compliance. And no one at this point, because you're not seeing a, a pie piece of there of red, is currently uh, trying, not even China, to try to use our, our franklinwi.gov domain and try to impersonate it. Um, because you just can't get through at this point. So that's, that's a very good report. Uh, I, can, I do, if I see it, I'll, I have Demartian up there. I will see it if they try. Okay. So if they try, they, ha they just didn't have a hit in the next 30 days. Have they tried in the past? Oh, yeah. <laughs> they have tried. Uh, but they, at least with the least last 30, 30 days, they aren't succeeding. And most of the time, if they see it's a door else, that's easier pickings. Uh, infrastructure changes. Uh, we have AT&T T1 lines. We moved that from copper uh, over to fiber. Um, so our AT&T T1 lines were now decommissioned, and we're now on AT&T T1 on their, on their flex reach program. Uh, City Hall went live in July. The police department is going to go over at 7 o'clock tomorrow. I guess who gets to get up early tomorrow and go <laughs> to the police department. Uh, the new fiber lines need to be trenched and installed over here at City Hall and at the police department. Um, there are significant costs over here at City Hall and at the police department. Um, there are significant cost savings. Uh, there's about $300 per month that we were paying per T1 for that, and the, the cost of even the fiber flex reach with the plans that we got, got are considerably lower, and in some cases it also allowed us uh, to reduce old to reduce old centric slash Plano telephone system lines, so we were able to take some of those old one one off lines and actually move them over to our T one for additional cost saving. So how many lines approximately are you talking about? Thirty six lines. Uh, and we. Caller ID. It's also something that also changed. Uh, now it's controlled through a portal applet. Uh, before you probably noticed, if, if you tried, if City Hall was calling you at our 7500 number, it always said Hale's Corner. 
on it. Now, now it'll actually turn around and actually it's the city of Franklin City Hall, and we can customize that as well. So if we wanted to customize it on a per extension basis, uh, we can turn around and actually do it. Uh, so we can make it more specific or more generic, however that you currently uh, currently want. So we have a little bit more control of what our caller ID says um, based upon business requirements for the particular area. Um, based upon business requirements for the particular area. Uh, an unplanned upgrade, uh, we ha are putting in 40 terabytes right now of disk over at the police department. Uh, they installed a new uh, video surveillance system, we installed a new uh, video surveillance system within the squads called WatchGuard. Uh, it replaces the old arbitrator system that they've been running on there, Panasonic arbitrator for a very long time. Uh, all of those are 4K cameras in there. They are beautiful cameras. Great resolution that they're getting off of it. But they are beautiful cameras. Great resolution that they're getting off of it. But it eats a lot of disk. So when you put in a 4K camera, the, the video storage files are a lot bigger than what it was under lower, lower resolution cameras on it. When you increase the sand storage space, you are also going to cameras on it. When you increase the sand storage space, you are also going to have to increase the size of your, your backup server. And then also for what you're going to be doing for long-term archives on it. Uh, annual, the annual PD increases of data storage is expected to significantly grow over time. Right now, we on WatchGuard right now, about a third. So as we start replacing vehicles, we do approximately five a year uh, on it. They will be then uh, replaced. So you get a brand new squad car. You'll be getting brand new uh, Rhino tablets in there. Uh, and then with that, they'll be getting all the new watch guard uh, cameras. The entire police department squads will be all 4K. That's going to increase disk storage uh, over time. And right now we're archiving video archives over to tape. I know eventually that's going to be problematic because I can't turn around and archive 50 terabytes <laughs> every week. And even with uh, multiple tape drives and LTO 8 in there, that's still a lot to to turn around and do so we might, might rethink of how we're doing the frequency of, of some of our, our tape archives to that and it, is tape it's cost effective you can put a heck of a lot of data on tape very reliable for <clears throat> things for a long time or off-site for very long periods of time but it's also very slow to restore uh, as well for it so uh, those, tape archives and storage is probably going to be a lot of discussions are those incremental backups then that you're doing so that if you have to retrieve them, then you have to do it incremental? Uh, reverse incremental, right, within Veeam. Mm -hmm. So it takes the incremental and then it folds it into the uh, so actual the actual main backup. Yeah. But I store basically the main backup and then 14 incrementals, yeah. and that gets actually burned onto tape. Jim, is the PD SAN, um, is that separate? It is the enterprise storage. Okay. So it is the SAN for everything. Okay. And then can you... This one. You can storage tier it. Can you... Yeah, that was my next question. Can you remind me of 3, three PAR does the storage yes, tier? Yes, it does do it. Now, the interesting thing is HP is eventually going to get rid of the 3 PAR. It's six years old right now. Uh, you can still get a 3 PAR. Uh, you can still get a 3 PAR, but they really aren't pushing they're trying to get people off of old fiber channel sands, even though I really think there's still a hot market out there. Legacy as it is, they still are trying to, to move everything to SSD and fast storage or hyper-converged storage yeah. over there. That's their big D and fast storage or hyper-converged storage yeah. over there. That's their big valley wick. Uh, another thing is, do we need this on site? Yes. Do we need it on site versus yes. in the cloud? Right. Or do we put it into some other form of governmental cloud? Etc. Okay. There's all sorts of ways you can mix it. Your growth, your growth is going to push you. Your growth is going to push you. Right? Yeah. Yeah. Right. Then if, comes, if you believe that it's secure <laughs> enough for you, I don't know the parameters for this type. It would of have to go to a government cloud, so it would have to be right. compliant for police departments yes. for government yeah. access. I wouldn't even think about just throwing it to some just Azure no. storage right. and putting it all out. And I think that's going to, you know play into your whole cloud strategy going forward in the next couple of years. But even even on three par with the disks, it's still expensive. 
that and then if God help us the day that they actually put in the yes. the, the the cameras and the police right. the chief of police a proponent for that but we also realize the date will come or we will have to go down that road and where we put the storage on that will be a challenge we will have to probably re-architect uh, our storage systems and rethink how we currently are doing a lot of stuff so I I see that off on the horizon okay. doing a lot of stuff so I I see that off on the horizon okay. uh, infrastructure changes um, we implemented the DMZ uh, here nothing is currently in it GIS will be the first thing that that's actually going into it uh, we have a new VMware vCenter server. We use our vCenter server. We used to have dual appliances. Now this is actually a virtual appliance provided by VMware running Linux. Um, 3PAR, uh, we moved our system management console, which was software running on a server. That's now running on a dedicated Linux appliance. Uh, all file servers, Nate, uh, over to 2016. And if we want, there is a direct migration path. 2019 to 2022 we just don't have the license for it that's why it's on 2016 uh, and then we're looking at exchange um, there's all sorts of new requirements and things that we might want to re exchange 2019 licenses if we want to buy it and build it out and the goal was to build out new exchange servers on premise we still may want to do that but we're right now put the project temporarily on pause to start recollecting some of our options that might potentially be out there, particularly with the cloud. Uh, uh, in preparation for that, one is we updated the Active Directory Forest uh, over to Windows 2016 mode. Uh, we consolidated all of our public folders, and it looks like the only ones that we're really using are using for calendars. Right now, that could easily be migrated to other mailbox types. We may be off of public folders entirely. We also added eight terabytes of disk space to City Hall for any new email volumes. So if we do go on premise with it, we absolutely have the disk space to cur currently do it. Or even if we went into a hybrid mode where we went ha partially on premise, partially cloud, uh, we have the capacity to turn around and do it. Uh, Baycon, and they are really working hard. Uh, they're <laughs> they're putting in a whole lot of new equipment in there, a whole rack of new equipment. Uh, they're upgrading all of their 911 systems. Uh, some of that equipment is 8 to 10 years old, uh, and they're all putting it all into brand new equipment, and that's going to update the nice new hardware, and that's also going to integrate with the PD Vesta system, which is the dispatch counter. When the phone rings, they have this uh, big LCD display board that they can touch, and it does various functions. Uh, on that, so the 911 system communicates to Vesta, and that Vesta right now also communicates to it. System communicates to Vesta, and that Vesta right now also communicates to it via Via system as well. So there's multiple points of integration. So Jim, with the cost of replacement, eight to nine years old, eight to nine years old is not that old. Do you just get it replaced and just start planning for the next replace that old? Do you just get it replaced and just start planning for the next replacement? Uh, technology, eight to nine years old. I normally that's, start looking at refreshes about five years. That's my point. For, I mean, for as soon as it stuff. gets in fresh, it's got to be. The main reason, yeah, they, yeah, it was Ann uh, over there that really started. You know, this stuff is really, really, really old. Baycom, you're on contract for it. You have to support it. Why don't you turn around and and update these systems to later hardware and actually put them on a, on a hardware replacement schedule okay. for it. Because this has been vendor related and not IT, Okay. it's always been Baycom has been responsible for their refresh. Kind of gave them a gentle kick, <laughs> turn around and actually go ahead and do it. So hopefully they'll be more responsive in, in, re, in refreshing their, their systems uh, on a more proactive basis instead of just waiting for something to break and then turning around and replacing it. Uh, as we have all known, uh, we're working with the NIST security policies. We have one up tonight. Uh, so we're creating new NIST security policies based upon an Arch-type framework. Uh, we're working on the initial security uh, a security assessment was performed. Uh, so we did a, a brief security assessment. Security assessment was performed. Uh, so we did a, a brief security assessment, a light version of it, to see where we, we currently stood. 
Uh, with that, we created security incident and response plans that were developed. Uh, a risk watch register was developed, and we also are in the process of making uh, significant changes in significant changes to the IT strategic technology plan. Uh, last but not least, we're doing a lot with uh, IT staffing. Uh, Robert Half Technology right now is our key integrator uh, for trying to find uh, new IT talent uh, for, from a much, much larger pool. Uh, we are engaging our consultants under a six month contract to hire. And after six months, they perform extremely well. We will then extend an offer to them uh, in 2021, Ryan Booz was brought on board as a full-time help desk support analyst uh, for City Hall. Uh, we're doing the exact same thing in 20. I have a new person, Mary Steinhardt, uh, who is going to be Anne's replacement and will be leaving us uh, at the end of the month. And then Mary uh, is being brought in as a replacement. And we will be moving Ryan temporarily over to the police department. Uh, until Mary uh, comes up to speed and learns all about her uh, during that time period. And the goal would be then within six months, if everything works out, to bring Mary on board as a, as a full-time City of Franklin employee, which means all IT personnel are now City of Franklin employees, which is a major departure from the, the staffing plot plan that we have. So uh, we're hoping this will bring long-term stability uh, to, to the IT department and as we start doing skill development amongst the IT staff uh, We hope to have a lot richer set of IT's talent and skill sets to actually draw upon It's always good to kind of step back and celebrate your successes for a tremendous amount of work done this year So good job any comments from the Commission? Good job this uh, year. I think it's an <laughs> excellent year I think, yes. uh, since, I think I would say since Jim came in, I think there's a lot of improvement have been yeah. done overall in the Absolutely. Uh, we talked about several months ago, mm -hmm. you prevented from occurring again with the, uh, the attack. Yep. Now, anything can happen. <laughs> yeah. I laugh about it, but as the Soviets, <laughs> or should I say Russians, are invading Ukraine, uh, there is concern. Will the Russian site in Ukraine, uh, there is concern. Will the Russian cyber attackers suddenly let leash on, on anyone who stands in their way? And you have state-sponsored hackers that are extremely good that may be going out there and looking for anything that's vulnerable. That is a major security concern at this point. Going out there and looking for anything that's vulnerable. That is a major security concern at this point. Do you have any accountability for water, water services? Uh, we provide I IT services, but they run basically on their own budget yep. and run on so a reporting structure within government, their own budget yep. and run on so a reporting structure within government is different. They also support their SCADA systems yep. internally themselves. They were looking at one time bringing that on board with IT, but they decided they're that separate. Was too much for, okay. for one person to do. So they still support the SCADA systems over there. And we help them with their infrastructure yeah. for one person to do. So they still support the SCADA systems over there, and we help them with their infrastructures when we can. All right, moving on to item five, which we need to move into closed session. Okay, I'm not sure. I got that big old thing that has to be said. Yep. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> You have to read that. Oh, sorry. Um, <laughs> yeah. The Technology Commission may enter closed session for this subject matter item or for these subject matter items pursuant to Wisconsin statute, the strategy for crime pre prevention and the implementation of a program and policy and tools, therefore, there to for, for the protection of the city's technical and information infrastructure and the city and the city officials, employees and the public who use the systems and also pursuant to Wisconsin statute 19.85 sub 1 E for competition and bargaining reasons with regards to the prevention, protection, regards to the prevention protection program and the subject matter item 
for these subject matter items and the investing of public funds in relation thereto and to re-enter open session at the same place thereafter to act on such matters discussed. Thus. And then we uh, need a motion any to any move motion into to close. closed session. I'll still move. Any seconds? seconds. All in favor? Tim a roll. Aye. Aye. Oh, that's right, I have to I'll do a roll. Uh, Alderman Dan Mayer? Aye. John Farney? Aye. Michelle Fisher? Aye. Just for future reference, I'll call session. Chairman, you can delegate. Thank you very much. Yeah. Good seeing you. Thank you very much. Okay, with this transition from old to new, and we are all going to be legacy, in the event that systems fail, do you go and make a suggestion for whoever is going to go and coordinate, like, catastrophe-type training? that our younger people who have never experienced the old way and only know people who have never experienced the old way and only know technology in the new way, that they're going to have some guidance to go and navigate potential problems if key, comp if key components of all of this technology isn't working. Do you make a suggestion to another department? Does the technology department say, hey, we got this all in place, but if we got something that's failing, all of the guys that were in the transition from the old to the new knew how to use it. Now we're doing it on robotic, but the robotic doesn't know. So are you making that suggestion to the other department? Uh, for the city, we actually do have an emergency response plan uh, for it, which is actually uh, coordinated and, and run by the uh, chief, of, uh, chief of, of fire department. And he is responsible for this is diluted as generation and time progresses. It should not. Okay. okay. I'll uh, see if I can give you that okay. info. Okay, thank you very much. Have a good night. I'm gonna make an exit. Merry Christmas everybody. Bye bye. bye, -bye. Have a good day. Merry Christmas, Merry everybody. Christmas. Bye bye. Merry Christmas. Good to see you. Good to see you. Merry Christmas, Jim. So we are now back in open session, going to item number six: update regarding fire network to access internet services for city business operations. Work to access internet services for city business operations. I handed out a document to you tonight, and I am going to ask you if I can collect it at the end, but um, this is something that we've been working on, I'm going to say, for about nine months now. And in, at the January meeting, we're hoping to have, be ready for a formal presentation, but I just wanted to do maybe just a few minutes, five minutes of brainstorming, and just kind of let you know where we're at, let you know what we're thinking. But this, when you talk about the roadmap for 2022, this is, you'd ask Jim, I'm guessing, other than the policies is probably one of the top things on our list. So we're looking at a fiber network. Commission was involved um, early in the year when we talked about the um, consultant we hired, MCE, to do a preliminary study and just kind of lay out what fiber exists in the city and what are the possibilities would be. All of the city business operations are marked on here. These are marked on here. White boxes with different colors of letters inside of them. Basically, when we started out this project, we said, okay, about how much is this whole project going to cost? And we came up with something in the neighborhood of that 1.36 you see in the bottom right-hand corner. Then what we started to do in the bottom right-hand corner. Then what we started to do with our consultant, at once the preliminary study was done and they were able to get a lay of the land, is we started contacting all of our partners. So our partners are, or our potential partners, I guess you Say, Franklin Public School District. They already have a very strong fiber optic network in the city. Uh, the city of Waterloo play into this. The Norway School District and perhaps the Berlin. So when we first started, we were thinking that yeah, this is going to cost us somewhere in the neighborhood of 1.3, and we have our own fiber optic network as well as um, beyond WISNet. So we want to have a commercial carrier and speed, etc. So when we first started this, we were looking at 1.3 million. We actually have the funding in the budget for 20. 
a few minutes. I don't know. This is one of the things the American Rescue Plan Act that the money was initiated in March of 2020. We received the first tranche of about 1.85 million in May of 2020, and we're going to receive 1.5 The council only allocated two projects so far for 2022. One of them is this project. Put up three. I think we have 1.37 million mm -hmm. in the budget, and then another couple hundred thousand for a form. We'll be hearing about that more and we'll look at it. More and we'll look at it. Maybe <laughs> be a really important person in that uh, project. But for this one, so I just had a call on December 1st with all of the partners. So right now, what we're trying to do is we're trying to come up with some draft agreements, right? Because we all need our governing bodies to approve them. Basically, um, the savings. Um, the savings, which is about 250000 from the time we started this to the time we started talking to our partners, are, those are the thicker lines you'll see. So down in the bottom, where you see the number 12 in red, and then you see the red line identified um, with a yellow highlight, that's a line that the city of Waukesha says in process, right around that same route. And so they say they can put that in and they can share it with us, and we don't have to pay anything for it. And on the flip side, they want to get from there up to the school district's East TC building um, near the blue and purple lines. And then we would help them do that. So we would just be doing something of those non-public um, services. And then up to the, on the right-hand side now, I'm looking at the purple line with the blue around it. That part was identified by the school district saying, hey, yeah, we have already have fiber and duct there. So sometimes it's fiber and duct, sometimes it's just duct. Down here, workshop probably would just put fiber and duct. Sometimes it's just duct. Down here, workshop probably would just put the duct work, duct work in and we pay for the fiber. Um, up here, Franklin School District actually has the duct and the fiber that they think they could perhaps share with us, as well as that big green and yellow stretch across the top. So we're looking at instead of sample phase, so we're looking at instead of sample phase four, instead of 299,000, we could do that for 195,000. Phase three instead of 76, we are looking at, depending on how we do things, about 313. Um, and then, like I said, we do a lot of sharing at the bottom. A couple entities <coughs> that have been talking is we're going to try between now and the end of January to start working on our intergovernmental agreement. I'd like the um, consultant from MCE, Joel McCulloughy, to come and make a little presentation to this commission first before it goes to council. Sometimes we get a, we get a little mixed up on how we do when the council gets it, I think a much more goal in this one, just because there's um, understanding and you know, the council approves things and they say, yeah, go do it. You all approve things and say, yeah, but make sure you worry about this and that and that. So we are hoping for at the January meeting, if not the January meeting, the February meeting for sure for the technology community, the February meeting for sure for the technology community, uh, presentation from the consultant. Hopefully I'll have some of those draft agreements available that we can start talking about as well. Then between <clears throat> January and March, once the Technology Commission would be comfortable with it, we'd go to the council, and then council would go uh, we'd go to the council, and then council would go uh, okay with it, then we'd go ahead to the bidding process. So the intergovernmental agreements are gonna have not just to do with sharing of the fiber, but also maintaining it, right? Because we don't have staff to maintain fiber. So again, the, the good thing about MCE is they actually act, they're a real strong partner in the WeCan network, so that's also another link that we have. And this, yeah, it's funny because as I'm talking to all of these districts, I keep saying to them, thank you, because you're helping me with this, and you're helping me with this, and they're helping me with this. And they keep saying that we're doing it the right way because we're trying to create a, a really, so if we want to just do what we really need bad right now, I'd say, we just do phase one, which basically takes us from fire station one up around the corner down to the police department. And we can do that pretty reasonably. But then we have our DPW facility that's very important. Go along, there's water sewer, you know, there's fire three sewer, you know, there's fire three. So not to say that this whole plan would get implemented in 22, but have an interim plan at least to get every city building some kind of um, WISNET connectivity. So even if the, the string from water to utility all the way back to the EDC is not done, or even if the string from water to utility all the way back to the EDC is not done, or even if the um, 
to go from that entire road on Drexel isn't done. City Hall could connect, City Hall complex could connect in the library because that fiber in the library, Twistnet through um, Waukee County Federated. Libraries, Twistnet through um, Waukee County Federated. Library system, so we can do that piece really easy. I think FS3 can probably hook to the school district pretty easily. And then we know we need to do the red because that gets us down to our DPW facility. We could have a high need um, plan internet right now. Um, plan internet right now. Um, but that's kind of what we're thinking about for a, a, an overall plan. I guess my thought is that sounds realistic. I think timing sounds realistic. I think working with the numbers is worth the resources that we save. Those are the kind of things I'm just kind of wondering if you want to, and you can even kind of think about it too until this presentation happens, but this this document isn't out there yet. In fact, I just got my hand last Friday. So I, I prefer, it just doesn't get out in general circles before we get too far ahead of it. I certainly wouldn't want the school district board to think that we're being disrespectful or making it like that. And, and don't get me wrong, even though all these partners are, I think, helping us a lot, there are things that we're doing to help all of those entities. So I think it's going to be a really good reciprocal agreement for us. Any initial thoughts? Personally, I'd like to hear the reserve comment until after the okay. presentation. Sure. My yeah. personal thoughts. Yeah. Executive yeah. summary would be helpful for me on the project. Understand the benefits and yeah. the overall cost and yeah. overall timing. Yeah. Um, and um, obviously, um, and um, obviously the benefits that you talked about, they become diluted if this project gets delayed for some reason. Uh, so, executive summary prior to getting together with the, the overview, um, so we can come in with a little bit of understanding about what a little bit of understanding about what, what we're going to hear. Um, what about a uh, so would you want us to hold off that presentation if we don't have all of those things in place? The um, timing and the cost, or would you rather see a presentation, perhaps get an executive summary? Yeah, I think having it as quickly as possible for the other things to cover besides this. That uh, I don't want to delay it because you do have the funding for it. I'm challenged right now to actually do a cost benefit analysis. Prelim study that MCE did yeah. because that does have a cost benefit in it. it. Has it's pretty rough numbers, but it has a cost benefit. It lays out the project, it lays out all the phases. Of course, you're going to see all the higher numbers. It was not yeah. predicting a partnership, but I think that would probably get you prepared for that prenup. So why don't I plan on shipping that? But I think that would probably get you prepared for that prenup. So why don't I plan on shipping that to everybody tomorrow and then? Um, if you have any questions in advance yeah. of the January meeting, we can certainly do that, but don't think that that'll be your only chance for questions. Do yeah. it. You know, we, can, uh, we can have more time for that. So I will send that to you tomorrow. And I'm assuming the benefits are... We can have more time for yeah. that. So I will send that to you tomorrow. And I'm assuming the benefits are greater than the cost savings. Really oh my right. gosh. It's like, forget about all the reliability. Yeah. It's less than the 60 back yeah. for everything. Like the driver that mm -hmm. we're talking about mm -hmm. here. There's uh, part of the plan is obviously, so th that's a good part of the partnerships, but right, so each year that we don't have um, internet costs to pay or our internet costs are lower, we're putting money into the maintenance fund. We may, we may not. There may be some time for big construction projects to yep. happen and changes like that, rerouting. So we'll have money in the maintenance fund too. But all of those key points, I think, are here with you, and then we will. Um, is there any more questions before we will otherwise we'll have those discussions to talk about it so i know you have a lot of policies to go through but if joel is coming on the 26th probably need 45 30 to 45 minutes yeah. my guess would be especially if more members are here especially if more members are here to talk about it yeah. is that is that okay yeah yep. i wouldn't rush it i know the policies are important but this it's got some dollars to if you also remember, too, when we look back to the five sticky <coughs> problems, the obstacles to IT strategy, problems, the obstacles to IT strategy, this has been identified in 2016. 
2016 uh, as one of the biggest major obstacles that we have for implementing an effective new and divergent IT strategy from what we currently have. For example, we cannot go easy cloud unless you have the Buffalo bandwidth. We can't yeah. effectively put in some form of a disaster recovery policy that, or, and put things, or disaster avoidance, uh, and move resources either to other buildings or up in the cloud unless you have the associated bandwidth right. to go ahead and do it. I mean, look at what you do doing backups over the cloud. Yeah, this is going to be a prerequisite. It. How, how are you going to get yeah. fit 40 terabytes and upload it when, when you're dealing with basically yep. 100K yep. bandwidth? It's more and more you're collecting more on structured data now. You know, so it's very important that you have bandwidth. Uh, programs that are out of our control, right? So that's our tax collection system. That's going to the cloud next year, whether we or not be able to get a So none of this is coming in each year. It's the cost. I think initially it was like, I remember 1.33, I think when we presented, I think. Of the year, mm -hmm. and now it's going to be, I think, when we mm -hmm. presented, I think, of the year, mm -hmm. and now it's gone to 116 because now the partners are coming into the play, Correct. and they're okay. That's exactly right. And and from my past experience with MCE, they're pretty conservative as well. So my guess is those are probably some. Oh. So, yeah. Yeah. so that would be. But yes, I'll definitely, and I, I think you're going to get enough of what you were from the. Study. It's a bit old. I think they finished it um, sometime in April to May, but I think it'll give you the background. All right. Uh, item number seven, Mr. Director, the technical or one technical mm -hmm. issue. Technical issue, uh, two-factor authentication. Uh, the Microsoft Exchange project is currently on hold or pause as the architecture is being re-examined. Due to recent changes in the scope and requirements, due to growing uh, security needs necessary for IT insurance. Two factor authentication will need to be implemented for VPN and enterprise messaging uh, applications, aka Microsoft Exchange, and fully incorporated into remote access solutions. Uh, implementation of 2FA will, be, will prove to be challenging in that the potential solution needs to be implemented at least, proved to be challenging in that the potential solution needs to be implemented at least across two disparate vendor systems, Palo Alto and Microsoft, while remaining as transparent and easy to use for end users as possible. Two-factor authentication may be easy to implement within the cloud or hosted-based versions of Exchange, may be easy to implement within the cloud or hosted-based versions of Exchange, which will require additional attention and education Two additional solutions above and beyond using uh, existing on-premise systems. Any recommendations or insights into two-factor authentication being used by other companies or organizations? Prime IT is looking for a wide variety of potential security solutions and is highly open to any suggestions and experience. I've already reached out to John. He's, he's given me some thoughts and ideas on it. Um, if you want to reach out to co uh, co-workers and partners and other people that you experience, I'm more than interested in. How fast are you going to move on it once you get there? Well, it's unfunded. <laughs> so we will have to figure it out depending upon the, the solution and the uh, availability of resources. For yeah. actually. Being on the risk register is probably a high item. Being on the risk register is probably a high item. Yeah. So we should take that in consideration. When we... And then for the director's notes of operations, uh, GCS land map hosted services, as we were talking about it. Uh, Milwaukee County GCS share, talking about it. Uh, Milwaukee County GCS share hosted services project has been postponed. Uh, the project will resume in the first quarter of 2022. Uh, it is estimated that all municipalities will have to be converted over to the county's portal system by August of 2022. Uh, the delay in the project is very much as my, migrating all Milwaukee County municipalities to a new system uh, within 60 days is widely considered to be fairly unrealistic and aggressive. Uh, the new project times are far more accommodating and will promote testing of the systems before fully rolling over. Which system was that again? A GCS land nav. Uh, it's 
and that is the one that we use for uh, all of our tax collection, uh, tax billing uh, software. All right, thanks for the updates. Uh, item nine, future agenda items. Can have you read through the list? Maybe we should put the fire burn. It is. I like it. Oh, wait a minute. And any questions on item nine, future agenda items, additions, deletions? I want to put two FA. Yep. Okay. Sometime in 22. I mean, okay. We're, I, I'm thinking we're going to know more in quarter one. Can we tee that up like in the February meeting then? That's timing. Because there's so many agenda items that we present. And Jim, from a policy perspective, what's the next policy on the docket to be reviewed? With the incident response, uh, the incident response policy, okay. the biggie. Okay. Any questions on for 2022? It's January 26 at 6 p.m. And then looking for a motion to adjourn. So moved. Okay. 